do not love the world nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves this simulation, the love of the Father is not in him. Because everything that is in the simulation, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pretentious pride of physical life, is not from the programmer, but is from the simulation. And this simulation and its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of the programmer abides forever. Spreading the gospel of the kingdom within the simulation. This is simulation complete. So we just read from John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. And I want to read 17. And the world and its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God abides forever. So it said lust a couple of times. Now replace lust with cheating, like cheating in a video game. Cheating is likened to our calling because it's a cheap form of pleasure if you haven't beaten the game, not even once. So here's a scenario. You have God Mode, which is the most coveted cheat in any video game because it makes you invulnerable to bullets, to dying. You can go through walls. Let's say you enable God Mode. You find out what the cheat is online because you give up on the game. It's too hard. You didn't have enough patience. You got frustrated. It wasn't fun anymore. You're like, okay, I'm just going to get this over with. You beat all the levels or you skip all the levels because you're not actually going through any of those trials, the difficulty of the levels. You beat the game and you don't get the same serotonin, the same dopamine release as if you beat the game in its normal difficulty, which is the real prize of beating a game under the creator's rules. Now, let's say you did beat the game. It took you so many tries, but eventually you got to the end. You beat every boss, you get to the end credits, and after that, the developer gives you the code to replay the game with God mode. But that's only after beating the game correctly, the way the developer intended. So cheating is a form of pleasure. Like I said, it's kind of cheap. If you do it before even completing the game without the cheats. I'm going to read from Psalm 1611. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We're programmed to want pleasures, and we want God's pleasures, but they're not of this simulation. We can't get them right away. They're like fruit. They take time, and they'll truly unfold in God's kingdom. Now, you got to ask yourself, do you want to earn God's future pleasures, or do you want to cheat now and partake in the pleasures of the simulator? that we see now which are deceiving, full of malice, they're seductive. Just like it said in 1 John 2, this simulation and its lust is passing away. What do we want? Now I'm not saying the first resurrection is the cheat code if we endure to the end. I think the concept or the analogy ends there where the developer gives you the cheat code at the end for completing the game fairly. If we pass our trials, endure to the end, and we stop using these worldly cheats to just receive pleasure now, it's actually easy to access our sins nowadays. We have computers. And just like the Proverbs say, you're seeking your own desire. You're railing against sound wisdom if you like to isolate yourself. But if we endure, we will become like God's. There will be a type of God mode in the first resurrection when we'll come down back to the simulation in white horses. I want to read from Psalms 149. Picture the first resurrection and then picture the day of trumpets here. Verse 1. Oh, praise the Lord. 
sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the drum and the lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He crowns the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. I love in verse 1 it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Just like in the first resurrection. We're going to be so excited. We're going to be jumping for joy, knowing that we made it. We passed the simulation, the wilderness. We're in New Jerusalem now. Now this is where the day of trumpets starts. Verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the nations and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with iron bands, to carry upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. O oh, praise the Lord. So this is when we return with Jesus Christ and we come after the kings and their nobles. And we know who the real kings and nobles are of this world. They're the demons. And we do wipe out a huge amount of people in the world. And the remnant go into the millennium. And then we know what happens to Satan and his demons. They get locked up for a thousand years. So we have the honor of coming back with Jesus Christ, which is like a God mode. But we do it God's way. And that's not cheating because you completed the simulation the way the developer, God the Father and Jesus Christ, intended. The world's pleasures are cheating, though. Hebrews 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, after becoming a great leader, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That's in Egypt. Choosing to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the temporary pleasure of sin. There's the pleasures of Egypt, and then there's the pleasures of God. And Moses refused to stay in Egypt, where he was pampered, he was taken care of, he could have died a ruler. He could have accepted all of Satan's promises of being a king, a ruler of this world. But he decided to go after God's pleasures, which requires suffering affliction, just like Stephen suffered, just like ultimately Jesus Christ suffered rather than to enjoy the temporary pleasure of that cheat. The cheats are weaknesses that we can enjoy now if we wanted to and forget our calling, skip through our calling, skip our trials. And just like that video game where we got so impatient, so frustrated with our calling that we decide to pull up that cheat. And that's how we skip our trial by taking an easy route using anger, hatred, lying, lust. Drugs are an addiction. But Moses didn't. The heroes of faith didn't. Why? Verse 26. For he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking intently to the reward. He was looking at the invisible. Outside of this simulation, the treasures of God. In verse 27. By faith he left Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, to keep the festival, the Passover festival. For he persevered, as if he were seeing the one who is invisible. As we're going through this simulator, how difficult it gets as we get closer to the end, just like a video game. We don't want to look at those cheats. We want to look at the invisible one, the Father, Jesus Christ. Follow that trailblazer. So when we're going through a trial at our job, at school, if we do well, don't we come out with more of God's spirit, more of God's righteousness, a little bit more? Because these fruits, they take time. And onward to the next trial, on to the next level. And it can seem easier to take that sinful route, which are the works of the flesh. You can read them on Galatians 5. Enter that cheat code and skip the requirements of passing God's trials, requiring God's patience, God's self-control, because he fights your battles. You just have to face them. 
You have to go through it. You have to endure. And that's the point. We also have the choice to use these cheats in the simulator. We're not allowed to. They're sinful. They're lustful. And even though we come back on trumpets and we get to defeat all our enemies, that's not the whole point. That's just one piece of God's plan. Guess what the next piece is, which is the ultimate piece of God's plan, which is the end game, the true end game, which is the eighth day, which represents infinity. If we beat the simulator the right way, what's your purpose in God's kingdom? Your purpose is to be a king and priest, to rule all of God's new galaxies. And your purpose in the simulator now is to beat these trials, pass them. God wants to know if you can be trusted. He wants to prove you. So fulfill your purpose in the simulator so that you can receive your true purpose in God's kingdom. And what are we going to say to each other when we make it into the first resurrection? Simulation complete! Simulation complete.